What's up magic makers? Drew here and this is a video response to a viewer response. <laughs> so Annie from Mirth and Reverence got a well she got many questions from viewers when she decided to come back and one of one viewer in particular asked her about her changes in perception throughout her spiritual journey on her path and well, first off, if you haven't watched that video, of course, it'll be linked below and you should because that in and of itself is like an amazing question to ask Annie because if I'm not mistaken, and I could be, Annie started practicing witchcraft in her early 20s, I think, and she's now in her mid-ish 60s, if I'm not mistaken. If I am, I apologize, Annie, but I believe that's the age range that we're talking about and that is, well how many shifts in perception can you have during that time what a wealth of experience and knowledge right there and i thought it was a great question particularly for her even though i haven't been on my path actively <laughs> anywhere near as long i have definitely had shifts in my perception so i wanted to do a response and talk about my own now most Everything that I'm going to mention are things that I have discussed before in other videos, but I've never like compiled the whole thing in one place. So I decided it couldn't hurt. Um, for anyone who has seen those other videos, this might be a little bit of rehashing and maybe it'll be boring and I apologize if that's the case, feel free to click off. <laughs> but for those of you who want to stick around and have this discussion, thank you. And if you have channel of your own, and even if you don't, I mean, there is the comment section. I would love to hear if there are any like major shifts in your perception and experience that have shaped the course of your path or your practice. Obviously for me, the first huge shift in perception was what I refer to as my initiation. So before that, I had this really nagging, like actually infuriating, I say infuriating, it didn't make me angry, but it, I would cry out of frustration because I felt this strong calling to be doing something spiritual and I couldn't figure out what or how to go about that. And that was basically the extent of it. Me searching, wandering, just pleading <laughs> to figure out what it was I was meant to be doing. Um, because I, I was, I knew I was being told you're supposed to be doing something and you're not doing it. And it was just maddening. So having that be the extent of it and then going through this illness and having all these I guess supernatural, I, I don't like that word, but um, experiences and coming out the other side, my perception of everything was different. Everything. The way I looked at the world after that illness was very different than the way I looked at it going in. My brain box had been blown wide open and just my perception of everything shifted a bit at that point. And then of course, immediately following it's part of that initiation where, um, you know, I began having conversations basically with trees. That also, like when I first realized that the tree was speaking to me, that blew my brain box open. And if you've watched my videos, you know that I actually began to question my own sanity or whatever. Like it, it was a huge shift in perception. <laughs> So, so that relates to my path and they're interconnected, my path and my practice, my magical practice. They're intertwined and I can't separate them. I, I can't separate my spirituality from anything. Like it's all consuming for me. And I don't think that that's a special attitude to have about it or anything. It's just my experience. But when I started, you know, again, not long after this initiation, I began to work in a witchy metaphysical shop. I did not explore the internet at all at all uh, for anything like I was not on the internet until really on the internet until I would say 2010 and then even then I didn't I did not come across witchcraft on the internet <laughs> um, as far as YouTube or blogs or anything like that I mean I knew there was stuff out there but I did not personally come into contact with anything of that nature on the internet until 2016 I just wasn't looking for it I I was fully submersed in my own community so when I first started working at this witchy metaphysical shop in 2007 you know I was exposed to a lot of witches and I was exposed to a lot of 
people who might describe themselves as light workers and metaphysical uh, practitioners or I don't know what I'm part of the metaphysical community I don't know you know druids and people on shamanic path and psychics and mediums and just uh, just so many things <laughs> Um, a lot of literature, obviously, on witchcraft and the practice. And I really got caught up in this idea that, and it wasn't, I didn't say to myself, there's only one way to do this. It's just that something was presented to me and it's the way it was always presented to me. So that's, you know, okay, that's how it's done. Let's try this. That perception messed me up for a couple years. The perception that there is a right way or there is a way, you know, I don't know, there's a right way to do this. That really, <laughs> that really messed me up. And I think this ties into the second perception, this perception that other people knew better than me somehow. Granted, the people around me had been doing what they did for a, a lot longer than I had been doing anything. And they did have wisdom to share, but I negated my own inner truth and my own inner knowing, my own wisdom about what was best for me. And I latched on to this outside influence. I, I don't even know how many years, I, I really don't. I started to figure out that things work differently for me than they did for the people around me. An example, energy work. And this is one of the things that actually my perception is currently changing on. So I can't really, I can't really give you what that looks like at the end. But when it started out, my perception of energy work one example is the giving and receiving hands everybody talks about. Your dominant hand being your giving hand and your non-dominant hand being your receiving hand. And that is sort of an average. Your average person, that will be their experience. But that's not true for everybody. And so these averages are great places to start to get sort of a baseline. But like, for example, it took me probably three years at least to figure out that both of my hands give and receive. My dominant hand does it on command, if you will. It consciously does it. Whereas my left hand is unconscious. It just does it when it wants to do it, um, sort of. The, not that I can't control it at all. It just takes effort. Whereas with my right hand, I can just be like, okay, I wanna read this energy. I wanna feel this energy. And like it, it automatically is receptive to that. And I wanna give energy is automatically, you know, it's just, very easy, quickly done. This one kind of has a mind of its own, but they both do the same thing. They both give and receive. That's my personal experience of that. But I was banging my head against a brick wall for three years, trying to make it, the, trying to receive with this hand consciously. Telling, you know, I want to read energy and not being able to do it. Eventually, I just got to a point where I just, I would just get in my space and do what I did. And then later I figured out what was going on. But for me, that was a huge, shift in my perception. Each individual has to find their place and find what works for them. Not only what works for them, but find how they work, how they interact. Um, this changed my perception on working with crystals. Yes, a crystal may have certain set properties, but a crystal is an energetic being, just as I am and our energies may interact differently than that same crystal might interact with the person standing next to me. There are no hard fast rules and like that just, you know, that was hugely uh, beneficial and um, it altered my path and my experience and my magic and everything in a huge way. Now I mentioned that my perspective is shifting with regards to energy work as we speak. And I am, um, this year I've noticed I've been going through a shift ever since last September. There's this shift that's been happening. Um, and, and actually on a subtle level even before that. But I started, I've started to do different, uh, different conscious exercises with regards to energy since switching over to a vegetarian diet. And I found that I was limiting myself and how I received, gave, interacted, interfaced with energy. Um, I had this sort of, and I guess, I guess maybe it's new agey, I don't know where it comes from, um, but this sort of, you know, in through the crown chakra, up through the root chakra, and like, I'm all about the chakras, don't get me wrong, but like this way of receiving energy and it being about the hands, 
hands, feet, crown. This kind of being the way energy comes and goes. Um, and I could still direct energy with my hands, no doubt. But I just kind of laugh. I just can't help but kind of laugh at myself. Like everything is energy all the time. So like this organ right here is like the most sensitive organ in my body. And energy is constantly moving across it and could be absorbed through it and given out from it. It's not just about my hands and my crown and my feet. I'm coming to this whole new way of consciously, actively doing energy work. And that's like, I'm in the baby steps. I don't know where that's going and what's happening with that. So um, if it's interesting at all, I'll keep you posted. But yes, my perception on how I work with energy is shifting in this moment. Another shift I've gone through more than once is my labels and I believe I'll continue to do so and I did a video about that not long ago where um, you know initially my label was oh um, I'm suffering from mental illness a severe mental illness and then when I realized that wasn't true my label didn't have one very quickly fortunately found that the checklist for shamanic initiation was what had happened not just with the like through many years and actually since childhood and realized oh, okay there's something spiritual going on here and sort of had that label shaman but then i began to question are you shaman if you're not out being shaman if you're not in a community and servicing that community serving that community are you actually a shaman? Hmm. Well, and my response to that was no, no, you're not. You're, you're on a shamanic path, <laughs> but you're not actually being a shaman. It, it's, uh, it's kind of arguing semantics, but this, th these are, I feel, important conversations for me. These labels, they shape how I perceive myself and how I present myself to the world, and they shape how others see me. Um, and so, as you know, I've moved into this now. I'm just mystic. My path is mystic, which I've always been. Oh, wait, that's, that's what I am. That's like the core, easiest, most simplistic, generic term I can put on what it is I am. And I'm a practicing witch. Um, so I imagine that this, this perception of myself and how I interact with everything around me, with spirit and with the spiritual world, will continue to shift and the labels are part of that shifting for me and not so long ago i did a a video where i talked about circle my relationship and my understanding of casted circle and spellcraft shifted it shifted three times so far in my practice initially i was told this is what you do so i did it and my perception was that i did this so that i could create a safe protected sacred space for my work. And then when my husband and I bought our home and we moved in here, um, of course, we are in control of everything here. And, you know, we have grids around the property. We have all kinds of things going on for protection and to create sacred space all day, every day in this space. So I no longer felt that I needed circle for that purpose. So I stopped casting circle. Um, I still casted circle when I did ritual just because it was part of the ritual for me and I still cast a circle if I did anything off of my property but in my home on my property for spell work or anything like that I just did it and then one day I just I was communing laying out in the yard communing with nature as I do with the nature spirits with with spirit and I had an aha moment I had an epiphany and for me at this point Circle is not about protection, although I will still use it in that capacity if I'm off my property, but that's not what it's about anymore. It's not about protection or creating sacred space. For me, creating, casting circle and, and having circle for anything I do is essential to have an energy shift, to be able to step fully in alignment with the stream of endless potentials to take myself out of what is and put myself into what could be, what might be, what I want. It's an energetic thing for me. So that, that has been a huge shift for me in my perception 
of circle and spell work and magic and all of it. Another huge shift I had in perception. Um, I've told this story in one of my witchy tales, uh, the blue monkey God, when the Hindu God Hanuman came to me in a dream. And this sparked me to seek him out and to find out about him. And through reading through his mythology and what have you, I immediately, it resonated and I understood why he came to me. And it was that Hanuman has this ability to look at anything and see his god and goddess, see Shiva and Pavati within it. And for me, these are the masculine and feminine aspects of spirit so he can see spirit in anything he could look at this crystal and see spirit in here and know that it is sacred look at this cork and see spirit in it and know that it's sacred this rock stone this hunk of plastic hanuman can look at this pen this piece of plastic and see that spirit moves through it and thus it is sacred. And this is the lesson that he taught me. Yes, I want to do my best to, you know, be a good custodian for the earth as a pagan. But I am blessed now, since meeting Hanuman, with this ability to take a step back, take a deep breath, and see the sacredness in everything, no matter how ugly or horrific or whatever. I can see that there is a sacredness within it. And I think that that is a beautiful gift. And that was a huge shift in my perception. I had a really big shift in my perception of working with guides and what that is, what that looks like, how that happens. I have talked about this as well. I'm not gonna get fully into it. I can talk about it in another video if anyone is actually interested in that, but I was blocking my guidance and once I came to terms with the reality of what that is and what that relationship is through my perception, once my perception of that shifted, I was able to work fully and completely and to become more integrated as a person, honestly. It was a huge shift in my spiritual perception, my perception of oh gosh, the layers of reality, if you will. Some people would probably refer to it as different dimensions or I don't know. The relationship between the different levels of existence. Um, I will compare that to the spirit body, the mental body, the emotional body, and the physical body. These are different layers. Let, let's leave it at that <laughs> for now. I don't want to go too deep into it in this video. But that was a huge shift for me and um, really put me in alignment with myself and my guidance, my higher guidance, my inner truth and knowing and really changed me in a huge way. Um, there's another shift in perception that I'm going through at the moment. Um, and it has to do with personified deity as well as the spirits. Now, this is a very vague term. The spirits could refer to ancestors. It could refer to like Devic earth elemental energies um, a lot of times I use it in reference to elemental energies I usually refer to the ancestors as the ancestors but spirits is a very general term for I mean you could put the fae in there you could put anything in there really I'm having a shift in my perception of them and how I work with them or don't like, I've never really worked overly much with personified deity. I usually wait for personified deity to manifest in my life. Actually, I'm not even waiting, like, when it happens. Like, when one pops up for some reason, like Hanuman earlier. I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's look at this. I rarely track them down myself. Um, I do feel connections to certain ones. Um, and if I'm honest, there are more gods than goddesses in that category, which I think is kind of funny because I'm always seeking balance. I don't want to put one over the other because for me, there is no over the other. But gods have a tendency to show up more than goddesses do because again, they come to me typically. I don't seek them out. But I'm beginning to wonder if I were to actively start 
seeking them out. Not necessarily going for a specific one, but actively start calling to personify deity, to present itself to me. If there wouldn't be a shift in my perception of working with deity and how that might affect my path. So this is an idea I've been toying with for a while. I have not taken steps yet, but I feel like I'm moving in that direction, which for me is a very strange thing, but I'm intrigued. Um, I'm feeling pulled in that direction for a reason. There's always a reason. So I'm going to go with it at some point. And again, that's formulating and I don't know what that looks like. Now, the spirits. At Midsummer, during my ritual, I, I did a dedication, if you will, to the spirits and to working with them. I introduced myself to them formally, which I had not done. I was guided to do so after after some astral work, I believe. And so I did so. And nothing much has happened with that until just recently. I keep, mm, I don't know how to describe it to you, but I keep getting this um, impulse to build a very small Shinto inspired shrine. Now that makes sense and doesn't make sense at the same time. It doesn't make sense because I'm not Shinto, obviously. <laughs> And there are so many types of shrines that I could go for. It does make sense, however, because I was, I lived in Japan from ages 11 to 18. Um, and I feel a very strong connection to Japan. That is, if, a, if there were a place on earth that was my mother, it would be Japan, even though I wasn't, even though I'm not Japanese. <laughs> um, I've had it suggested to me that maybe I was in a past life. I don't know if that's true or not. Honestly, the thought had never occurred to me. <laughs> as, as deeply rooted as I am in that country, and I won't say culture, the country, the place, as deeply as like my heart is connected to that physical land mass, um, Okinawa in particular, but thought never I just always associated it with me being there in this lifetime and it being a huge part of my life even before I moved there because my father lived there off and on I have an overwhelming urge to build a a Shinto inspired shrine in the backyard under the wisteria and I had a whole other plan I had a whole other plan for that it was going to be a shrine I was going to put a shrine there for the fae and I knew exactly what it looked like, a big, elaborate, beautiful shrine. Because, you know, you got to have all the bells and whistles for the fairies. And because I want something big and beautiful, this is not that at all. This is very rustic. And, which I like rustic, don't get me wrong, but, I mean, obviously. But very rustic and simplistic and minimal. But it's a house for the spirits of the land. For the elemental spirits, for the divic spirits, not the fae per se. To me, these are different things. And I can't help but feel that this is also a shifting because I've never, like, this is not a way that I've ever worked with anything before. Again, this, is, this does not go down to worship as much as just honor and respect. You can say I'm arguing semantics, but I don't worship. I don't. And that's not, I mean, I guess that could stem from ego to an extent, but in all honesty, when I think about it, it's because I feel like equal. We, we are all one and I just feel unconditional love. So there's no, there's no, I don't know. There's no room for like groveling or bending the knee, bowing down before something. It's, it's just this union and this connection. So I don't know. Do with that what you will. But I can't help but feel like there's going to be another shift. And I think it's connected this, 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 there's going to be a shift in the way I perceive and work with spirit in personified form or however you want to word that. I feel like I'm going through that right now. And again, I don't know what that looks like or where that's going, but I'm interested to see. So, you know, I've gone through many changes in perception on my path. I am still going through changes in my perception on my path. And I hope to continue to do so as I go on. Um, because to me, it's a sign of growing, developing, maturing, changing, 
gaining wisdom and experience. Okay, I've talked about this for more than long enough. Hopefully I can edit this down some because, whoa. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you to Annie for doing the video. Thank you to her subscriber for asking her the question. If you're still watching, thank you. And until next time, much love and gratitude.